Hi, I'm Bruce Bonebreak. Welcome to this installment of the AutoZone Do-It-Yourself video series. The single most important safety system for your vehicle is the brakes. If you've ever been driving and the brakes suddenly stop working, you know how unnerving and even frightening that can be. You no doubt consider yourself lucky if you manage to avoid a collision. While all brakes wear out eventually, normal loss of brake function, such as that caused by the deterioration of the pads or the rotors, is a gradual process and the driver has plenty of time to schedule repairs before the stopping ability is significantly impaired. On the other hand, failure of the master cylinder often results in sudden and unexpected loss of the ability to stop the car. Fortunately, the master cylinders and hydraulic systems found on modern vehicles are very reliable and can last the life of the car. Still, master cylinders do sometimes fail and we're here today to show you what to do if that happens to your car. We'll be working on a 95 Honda Accord. The brake pedal fades, which means that it's not holding hydraulic pressure. Although it can be caused by a couple of other things, we suspect that the master cylinder is at fault, so we'll check there first. Before we get started, let's talk about how the hydraulic brake system and master cylinder work. All passenger vehicles on the road today use hydraulic brake systems. The principle that makes a hydraulic system work is pretty simple. When the brake pedal is applied, it causes a piston in the master cylinder to push fluid from it through the brake lines to the pistons in the calipers or wheel cylinders. Those pistons force friction material against the spinning drums or rotors causing the vehicle to stop. The brake systems on most modern vehicles consist of two individual hydraulic circuits with two wheels on each circuit. If one circuit loses pressure, the other will not be affected and will still be able to stop the car, although braking power will be reduced. The master cylinder feeds each circuit from either a primary or secondary reservoir. When the brake pedal is applied, a piston in the primary reservoir begins forcing fluid through the lines of that circuit. At the same time, pressure begins to build between a primary and secondary pistons until the secondary piston moves enough to force fluid into its circuit. With our spongy brake pedal, there's a couple things we want to check right off the bat before we just dive in here and start replacing parts. Well, the very first thing would be our fluid level on our master cylinder. That's kind of a unique feature with this vehicle is that it actually has a level sensor built into the cap that will tell you when it's low on brake fluid. And if you look at it, you can see that we're full. But if you took the brake, took the cap off and looked in the reservoir, if it was extremely low on fluid, there's probably a reason there's some place that fluid went. So what you'd want to do would be to go ahead and fill up the master cylinder, pump, put the cap back on, pump the brake a couple times, and look for any kind of an external brake fluid leak. If we don't find any leaks, there's a couple other things to keep in mind. One is, on a car that has disc brakes on it, as the disc brake pads wear, that piston is going to move farther out of the caliper bore and it's going to take fluid to fill up that space. So it might just be normal wear on the disc pads, or it may even be that the disc pads are worn to the point they need to be replaced. But most of the time when you see the fluid levels low like that, that's a symptom of another problem. I know the power brake system on this vehicle is working because when I tested it, with the engine off, you hit the brake pedal, it was real hard. I start the engine up, I've got the power assist action. I can feel that working. Testing the power assist is quite simple. Start by pressing the brake pedal hard several times with the engine off. The pedal should feel firm and stop the same place each time. Then, while holding pressure on the brake, start the engine. If the pedal goes down slightly then stops and feels firm, the system is working properly. The reservoir is full so we know we don't have a fluid leak. Since air in the system can also cause the brakes to fade, bleeding the system will determine if that is the problem. I'll talk more about bleeding the brakes later on. In our case, the fluid didn't have any air bubbles so that means the master cylinder needs to be replaced. As with any job, to do it right, you'll need the right tools. The nice thing is that jobs we'll be covering today don't require a large, expensive assortment. Basic hand tools are generally all you'll need. You'll need a shop manual for your specific vehicle, DOT 3 or DOT 4 brake fluid, as recommended by your vehicle manufacturer, brake line wrench, and a drop light. You may also need screwdrivers or pliers to remove some components. Be cautious when working under the hood. If the engine has been running, components will be extremely hot, so be careful what you touch. When lifting a vehicle, never work under it until it has been secured with wheel blocks and securely positioned on jack stands. A hydraulic jack alone is never enough. Be cautious when working with oils and chemicals. Many are damaging to the groundwater environment, 
and toxic to people and animals. Never drain or pour chemicals into the ground or sewer systems. Local municipalities and counties offer resources for proper disposal. And always, remember to wear your safety glasses. Get the entire DVD for this repair and all other procedures covered in the complete car care series at your local AutoZone store.